Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a psychological thriller film, Bluebeard. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the physician listening to the weather forecast while riding a bus to a remote area far from the city. He notices a man, weirdly watching him at the front of the bus. He just shrugs it off and continues listening to the weather forecast. Away from Seoul's Gangnam district, he starts working as an assistant physician to make ends meet. He performs endoscopy on a female patient. She gets weirdly aroused as the gadget enters the back end. The female patient continues to experience the sensation while being instructed to push the device more and further. The physician's assistant breaks into laughter, unable to resist the comical scene. Despite the patient's whispers, the physician proceeds with his work until she accidentally kicks the physician in the face with her bare feet due to the tingling sensation. Since divorcing his wife, his only pastime is immersing himself in the pages of a good mystery book. He takes up the book on his desk in his office and continues reading from where he left off every time he has the time. Later, he comes extremely close to missing his bus stop on his way home from the clinic after a long day of work. Afterward, the butcher's wife tells him that a parcel from a woman arrives at his landlord's meat store. He gets the package and sees the landlord eating a raw piece of meat flesh. The physician is puzzled by the bizarre scene he witnessed, and it got him real curious. He sees the packages that are from his ex-wife. The following morning, the alarm is blaring. The physician wakes up, startles, and hurries to work. The physician, thinking he's late, arrives earlier than he plans, and is surprised when the clinic's owner walks in for a cup of coffee in hand. They converse about the owner's plans to open a new clinic in a desolate area, where crime is widespread with several unsolved murders. Because of this, the owner's wife has nothing to complain about, unlike the physician's clinic in Gangnam in Seoul, which had an exorbitant rate, but no visitors to pay the expenditures. On that same day, the clinic's owner decides to go out to lunch with the two female clinic assistants, when the landlord and his daughter come late to the clinic. The landlord's daughter notices him exiting his office and apologizes for missing their schedule of appointment. She requests that the physician treat the landlord as his last patient. He accepts, thinking it's a patient and it's his landlord anyways. After, the landlord lays in the physician's office and starts talking eerily, like a confession to murder under the influence of the anesthetic. The following day, the physician wakes up from the blaring noise. A plastic bag sits on the table as the butcher grinds meat at the landlord's meat store. To be surprised, there's a hair on it. The plastic bag slides to the ground, proving that it contains a human head once he removes his glasses. When he wakes up on a speeding train, he has no words to express himself. He comes to the realization that he was only dreaming things. However, it seems that something is amiss and that the dream he had is absolute. Not soon after, the physician goes to pick up his son. While the physician and his son are having lunch, the physician's son is glued to his smartphone the whole time. He is furious, so he threatens his son by throwing the phone out the window. The son tells his father that a guy with a headless body is found in a river, while they are dining at the restaurant. Later that night, the physician arrives at his door with a bag of beer in hand. He starts to panic when he sees the butcher knocking on his door, carrying a load of cut meat as a token of gratitude from the butcher for the physician's concern for his father, the landlord, the day before. The butcher says that it is a diaphragm and bursts into laughter. They walk inside the physician's flat and down a few bottles of beer. The butcher asks about the physician's whereabouts earlier in the day and finds out that he is seeing his son and recently got a divorce from his wife. The butcher is genuinely curious as to why the physician puts interest in his meat store. The butcher's phone rings just as the physician is ready to answer. The butcher's wife is looking for him and tells him that his father, the landlord, is pooping in his pants again. The butcher interrupts their talk by going downstairs. The next day, the physician and his ex-wife meet in a coffee shop. His medical assistant is aware of his presence inside the cafe. It seems that he and his ex-wife are discussing something. In the end, they end up arguing in the physician's apartment, where they meant to do the deed. Angry with the physician, she smashes the mirror and screams at him. The butcher knocks on his door and inquires as to what is wrong inside. Several residents are complaining about a high-pitched noise originating from his apartment. The physician apologizes and reassures the butcher that everything is fine, and the ex-wife leaves. On that same night, the butcher brings a spare mirror to replace the broken one. He invites the physician to grab some drinks downstairs in his shop. The physician agrees, and they are talking about the incident that happened earlier with his ex-wife. When there are no more drinks left, the butcher goes to the kitchen to grab some more, and the physician is really drunk at this time. The physician arrives at the clinic with a full house of patients for vaccination shots. The landlord is also present to obtain a dose of vaccine. 
The landlord tells him that it is difficult at first, but it will get easier with time. This prompts the physician to call the landlord's claim into question. After receiving a vaccine shot, the landlord leaves the clinic. The physician is hearing a lot of rumors about the landlord's family from the patients at the clinic. The physician overhears that the landlord's wife was mysteriously missing a few years ago, and no one knows where she is. He even notices an unknown man wearing a bucket hat and mysteriously staring at him on his way back to his office. Policemen arrive at the clinic to inquire about the death of a person whose torso is left at a nearby clinic. The physician's suspicions are being triggered by what he just hears. Within a few minutes, the man is nowhere to be found inside the clinic. The physician starts wondering who it is and continues giving the patient vaccine shots. The next day, the physician is acting weird and uneasy. He imagines things such as keeping the plastic bag with a head inside his refrigerator and not resting well. He is like hallucinating and seeing things such as the butcher and landlord killing people and beheading humans. He wakes up sweating in his office bed. He goes to a nearby convenience store to get some snacks. As he is about to return to his clinic, he notices a group of people inflicting physical harm to an unidentified man. When he arrives at the clinic, he sees his assistant inside, illegally stealing medicines. He is questioning the assistant, who begs him to let it go this time, but the physician insists on telling the truth to the clinic's owner. The assistant exits the clinic right away. The following morning, the other female assistant arrives at the clinic and sees the physician sleeping again. She learns from the physician that his apartment's boiler is broken, so he will be spending the night at the clinic. In the meat store that night, the physician decides to go home after noticing that they will be closing the store for three days because of a small situation. His curiosity is triggered when he sees the butcher's truck full of blood dripping on the floor. He is shocked by the state of the butcher's kitchen when he enters. There is an enormous amount of meat and organs to be found. He scans the area and finds a familiar object in a black plastic bag while his eyes wander. Seeing the hair again makes him frightened. When the butcher calls him, he has already gone out and tries to run as fast as possible, but it is too late. The physician went into a complete daze. The butcher thanks him for vaccinating his father and he turns to answer the butcher. He inquires about the store's closure. That is when the butcher informs him that he and his wife will visit his in-laws for a few days. Before going to his flat, the butcher invites him for a second drinking session when they return from the trip. The physician agrees and continues on his way home. However, he is questioned by the policeman the following night in his apartment. The physician learns that his ex-wife is missing, and he is being held responsible for her death. By far, he is the last person to hear from his ex. A few minutes after the policeman left, his female assistant also arrives at his apartment. She is afraid that the physician will report her to the proper authorities for stealing medicines from the clinic. The assistant exits the apartment right away. The physician is chasing after the female assistant, who walks out the door. When he notices that the butcher is following the female assistant, he gets suspicious. After hearing a loud scream from the street, the physician looks up to find the butcher and his female assistant gone, and his vision completely blacks out. Despite the physician's disbelief, he is surprised to be back in his apartment after the incident. He recently discovers that this man has been following him for quite some time and that he is a former detective. The physician learns that the detective has been investigating the landlord and the butcher for 15 years during this time. Since the detective retired, he never had the opportunity to investigate the mysterious killing in the community. He also discovers a plastic bag in the physician's refrigerator, and the physician tells the detective that the butcher places it there. Later, the physician finds that his female assistant from the night before is now missing. He receives a call from his son and discovers that he is crying because his son dislikes being with his grandmother. His son is furious and on his way to the physician's apartment. He tells his son not to go in the apartment but instead to his clinic. The butcher appears out of nowhere and offers to take the physician's son to his father. The son agrees and the butcher answers the physician's phone call on his son's cell phone. When the physician realizes who is on the phone, he freezes and yells for his son to be returned. When the phone call is disconnected, he goes straight to his apartment. He walks into his room and sees someone there, so he stabs the person in the eyes. The physician is not familiar with this individual. He passes out again, waking up at the detective's office. When the detective is about to report the physician to the authorities, after learning that he is a suspect in his ex-wife's death, the physician smashes a bottle in his head. The detective passes out, and before leaving, the physician tells him that there is a reason why the detective had not been able to catch the murderers for 15 years. He goes to the meat store and walks to the butcher's kitchen. The physician is looking through the plastic bag when he notices the butcher attempting to murder him. They are fighting until the police arrive. 
The physician is dizzy again, and he never gets a chance to tell the cops about the black plastic bag that he suspects contains a human head. The physician awakens in an interrogation room. Police officers are questioning him, including the detective who approached him a few days ago. The police ask the two female assistants, the butcher, and the butcher's son, as witnesses. They all give the same answers. The physician owns illegal drugs and anesthetic drugs used on his patients during colonoscopy. The person who was stabbed back in the physician's apartment is also being interviewed. This man turns out to be the physician's Munalunder from Gangnam, where he flew for financial reasons. There is no doubt in anyone's mind that the physician seems to be responsible for his ex-wife's murder and all other homicides in the community, including one that occurs in a nearby river. The detective insists that the physician is in therapy for depression and has now gone insane. The physician defends himself by claiming that he is being set up by the butcher, landlord, and his female assistant, but the police do not believe him. Later, the physician is about to beat the detective when the police arrive to stop him. He is being admitted to a mental health facility for treatment. The next day, the physician wakes up in his hospital bed with a police officer standing as a guard. When he hears the news about him, he becomes enraged. He is given additional medications for people who are mentally ill. For all of the murders he is accused of, the physician will suffer for the rest of his life. The movie ends with the butcher's son traveling to the Philippines to meet his mother. The butcher, landlord, butcher's wife, and female assistants go on with their lives. It is discovered that the female assistant, who is illegally obtaining drugs from the clinic, is friends with the butcher and the landlord. They are transacting illegally to provide the medications for the hallucination to the landlord. The butcher warns his father to be more careful in the future. CCTVs are now ubiquitous and can no longer be used to carry out killings. Returning to the day when the physician's ex-wife visits his apartment, the ex-wife is unaware that the landlord follows her as she walks to the parking lot. She removes flyers from her windshield when the landlord smacks her in the head with a large metal. The ex-wife dies immediately. The landlord sits on the grass and his son, the butcher, arrives. The killing is clearly heard from the car's dashcam to be a routine act of the landlord and butcher. The butcher notices the ex-wife's body right away, and he is horrified to see that the car's dashcam is recording. He immediately grabs the ex-wife, and the truth about the murder is never discovered. The physician became mentally ill, and is being falsely accused of murder, which he never committed. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.